Bienvenue. Welcome to the EMSB's ParentCon 2023 Lunch and Learn series. My name is Marika Ramundo, and I'm a parent volunteer on the EMSB's Parents Committee. The purpose of this virtual Lunch and Learn series is to provide you with some valuable information, tips, and strategies to help you navigate the joys and challenges of parenting. We understand that being a parent is a lifelong journey, and we're here to support you every step of the way. We appreciate the time you've set aside to be here with us. So grab a cup of coffee or your favorite lunch and settle in for what promises to be an informative and enjoyable session. Today's session asks, what can we learn from children's art? Children are innately creative and often prolific producers of art. They are also natural curators, constantly collecting, arranging, and interpreting groups of things that they have assembled. Throughout history, children have mainly been seen in terms of what they lack, whether that is education, discipline, or experience. But children possess knowledge and skills that have much to teach the adults of the world. If only we are open to learning from them. This talk will consider what and how we can learn from the youngest members of our society by focusing on their creative outputs. Dr. Monica Eileen Patterson is an Associate Professor of Childhood and Youth Studies and the Assistant Director of Curatorial Studies at Carleton University in Ottawa, Canada. She holds a PhD in Anthropology and History and a Certificate in Museum Studies from the University of Michigan. Patterson is the author of several articles and co-editor of two books, Curating Difficult Knowledge, Violent Pasts in Public Places, and Anthrohistory, Unsettling Knowledge and Questioning Discipline. Currently, she's completing a book about childhood in late apartheid South Africa. Dr. Patterson, the mic is yours. Hello, my name is Monica Eileen Patterson, and I'm an associate professor in Carleton University's program in childhood and youth studies. I'm delighted to be with you today to share some of my thoughts on how we might learn from children's art and curation. I draw from my ongoing research as a cultural anthropologist and historian, in addition to my experience as an independent curator, but perhaps most importantly, my role as a mother to my five-year-old daughter. You can see on the slide that I've included my email address and I welcome any thoughts, ideas, questions, or criticisms if you'd like to get in touch. In the talk that follows, I'd like us to consider what we can learn from children's artistic expressions and curation. And I ask, how can you engage with children's art to better appreciate them as knowledgeable and contributing members of society? Children make up about 20% of the population in Canada and almost 30% in the world but they are often treated as blank screens upon which adults cast their own values, hopes, and fears. But they are important members of not only our families, but our communities and society at large. Within households, for instance, children require care, but they also contribute significant emotional and physical labor. As a mother, I sometimes feel overwhelmed by all of the work that parenting entails. Cooking, cleaning, organizing, and entertaining one's children can feel like a never-ending job. But children also contribute to our households, whether through doing chores, taking care of siblings, or caring for the adults in their homes through conversation, kindness, and love. Children are observant and reflective, and like adults, they have ideas and experiences that can help improve our society. They hold a great deal of knowledge, not least about themselves and other children, and the circumstances of their childhoods in this particular historical moment. However, much of this knowledge is not valued or recognized as such by adults. But this is not true everywhere. Cultural anthropologist Alma Gottlieb has written about the Bang people of Cote d'Ivoire, West Africa who believe that babies enter the world possessing all knowledge and speaking all languages. As Gottlieb writes, when a new baby arrives, they see it as not a, as being born, but as being reincarnated after a rich life in a previous world. Far from being a tabula rasa or blank slate, a bang infant is thought to begin its life filled with spiritual knowledge. 
As they become socialized and grow older, they lose their connection to Rugrube in order to exist in the world they inhabit. So Rugrube is the spiritual world that infants are believed to come from. And this is a place where all people of the world across all time have coexisted in peace and harmony. So as Beng children mature, they slowly lose their connection to this world and much of the knowledge that they are born with. It's an interesting way, I think, to think about socialization and education because it kind of flips the positive association that we assume come with these processes. It also inherently recognizes the youngest of children as having knowledge and perspectives that are valuable and worthwhile. So what would it look like if we valued children in that way? What could we learn? I suggest that one important and fun area to focus on is your child's artistic creations. One of our earliest languages is art and children are innately artistic. Psychologists, educators, and social workers have long held that making art helps children process and socialize difficult experience. Art offers a vehicle for children to symbolize their feelings, tell stories, engage their imaginations, and create new worlds. But too often, artistic opportunities and materials are based on designs and processes created by adults. Think, for example, of the difference in creative opportunity provided by a coloring book, on the one hand, compared to a blank page with different materials like paint, glue, and scissors or the difference between trying to copy an established artist's masterpiece versus creating your own. Schools, museums, and other spaces offer a vast range of arts activities and resources for children that have been designed by adults. Now, this approach is certainly not without value, but it reproduces a traditional top-down approach of interacting with children and a power dynamic in which adults hold most of the authority and set the terms of engagement. When this is the only way of creating opportunities for children to be creative, it misses an important opportunity to explore what children can create themselves if given the chance to draw from their own expertise, capabilities, and capacity for creativity and innovation. Given the increasing amount of time children spend emulating adult skills and values as they age, it is important to hold open space for their own ideas to flourish. Doing so can provide a brief respite from children imitating adults, answering their questions, and conforming to their frameworks. So, what does engaging with children's art look like? And what follows, I'll offer a few humble suggestions for ideas to try on. Now, obviously these can't be applied across the board all the time, but I offer these as possible openings that might create or broaden the spaces for children to assert their own ideas and creativity in their interactions with you. Firstly, I suggest that you create opportunities for children to produce art based on their own ideas rather than copying adults or following adults' instructions. Secondly, provide materials, but not expectations on outputs. This can be especially challenging, particularly for those of us who are very involved with our children and like to talk to them as they're making their creative works. 
So I constantly have to remind myself to bite my tongue and leave space open for my daughter to see what she does rather than sharing my ideas about what's possible. The times when I've most successfully silenced my input, I've also been the most amazed and surprised at what she can do. Number three, let your child know that they are in control and have the power to make their own decisions within certain safe times and spaces, of course. Because children spend so much time being given instruction and being told what to do, it helps them to really embrace their power by articulating the fact that they have it. A good way of thinking about how to do this is to also put it on the daily agenda. Make time every day to let your child know that they can call the shots. Again, it doesn't have to be for extended periods of time. It doesn't have to interrupt your schedules, but I think it's a great exercise for everyone in the family to see what can happen when children take the lead. Number four, approach your child and their artistic productions with deep curiosity. Rather than assuming that you know what they're doing, what their intentions are, and what the significance is of what they produce, ask neutral questions that elicit their own explanations. You might just find that you're entering in to whole new worlds of imagination and processing and feeling that you didn't even have access to before. So try not to impose your own meanings, interpretations, or value judgments on what they create. This one is especially tricky for those of us who are used to giving positive reinforcement. Children pay attention to not only the words that we speak, but the feelings that are behind them. And they can quickly become very hungry for and even dependent on positive reinforcement. Of course, positive reinforcement is not a bad thing, but when it's linked too much to skill or success, it can lead to bigger problems down the road. So particularly in creative domains, where freedom of expression is really the primary goal, it's best to recognize the effort that went into their works more than their perceived quality. So for instance, rather than saying, wow, this is such a beautiful painting, you can point to some of the more neutral observations like, I can see that this took a lot of time. How did you manage to get the color, this shade? You can ask questions like this that provide openings into the actual process and experience of producing art and can lead to a closer connection with your child. You can also engage with your child's art as a way of learning more about their perspectives and the societies that they inhabit. Simple questions that might seem obvious like, who is this? What are they doing? How are they feeling? Or what's going on here? When asked from a point of sincerity and with a generosity of both time and spirit, questions such as these can really elucidate a great deal of information. Information that not only makes you feel closer to your child, but might actually teach you something about the world that you live in.
Finally, you can encourage children to curate their works, assembling them however they wish and adding extra layers of meaning and explanation. To curate is to choose or create a set of things, assemble them together and put them on display for some larger purpose. Traditionally, curators have produced exhibitions in art galleries and museums, but we are all curators of something in our everyday lives whether it's creating playlists of music, decorating our homes, putting together outfits, making a well-balanced meal or planting a garden. When you start to look for instances of your children's curations, you'll probably find them everywhere. Many children collect things and the way that they care for these objects and sometimes put them up for display can tell you a lot about their feelings and their thoughts about these things. During the COVID pandemic lockdown in 2020, when museums around the world were shut down, the National Museums of Liverpool and the United Kingdom invited children between the ages of four and 11 years of age to curate exhibits from their personal collections of objects and artworks at home. Their My Home is My Museum project was, in, was an important and all too rare initiative to document children's lives and the submissions by children from across the UK and around the world provided a powerful view into their perspectives and experiences. Here you see one of the young curators proudly displaying her most treasured possessions. In a statement that she wrote along with her submission, she talked about the meaning of these objects in her life and the way they helped to map onto important moments and experiences that she wanted to always remember. These ex exhibitions showed us that children are crucial citizens whose knowledge, perspectives, and experiences are valuable. They too make meaning and they make history. Childhood is an important time for learning through formal education, but also social and emotional learning. Many of the institutions and adults that children encounter see them through a deficit-based lens. In other words, focusing on what they lack rather than what they have to offer. Children are often treated as liabilities who are either in need of containment, learners in need of education, and energetic beings in need of control. Rather than thinking of children from a deficit-based approach, what if, whenever possible, we focus on what they can contribute? One concrete way to do this as parents is to invite them to curate the creative works they produce and the things that they treasure. Children are innate curators and you can probably identify many, many exhibitions of some sort within your home already. Ask them about these spaces, their collections and their displays, and they can tell you more about them you might just discover a pathway into the hidden worlds they inhabit by creating an opportunity for them to share what matters to them. As the brilliant scholar who was also a poet and activist Bell Hooks once said, most children are amazing critical thinkers before we silence them. Children have much to say about the challenges facing the world today, and in many cases, more creativity and courage than the adult leaders around them. Children are experts on themselves and their experiences, and they have a lot to teach us if only we are willing to learn. Taking an active, ongoing, and child-centered interest in the things they create and curate can provide unlimited insights into their knowledge and perspectives, 
and the broader world that we all inhabit. With those brief thoughts, I will bring my talk to a close. I thank you sincerely for your attention and please do get in touch if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions. I hope you enjoy the rest of your conference and you have a great day. A big thank you goes out to all the ParentCon speakers, educational partners, and behind the scenes organizers. Your commitment to excellence in education is outstanding. And thank you for taking the time to attend this session. We hope you found this session valuable, educational, insightful. For more resources, don't forget to visit the EMSB Parents Committee on Facebook or online at emsbparents.ca.